I definitely want to talk about your product sourcing, especially when we consider the parts of the world where you are sourcing product. These are already parts of the world that, um, you know, they don't have the the governance and the access the way that, you know, the regulations that necessarily exist here in the United States around fair labor uh, practices. So I want to make sure um, as my fangirl for Soli is rising, I got to I got to know more about your sourcing, and I know our audience wants to know more about this too. How are you treating your farmers? How are you treating the farm laborers? How are you deciding upon who you're going to be working with? And how are you and and the Soli brand empowering the communities where this fruit is grown and sourced? Sourcing, as you might have guessed, is a huge part of Soli. Uh, we took years building the sourcing part because, again, if you have one ingredient products, you have to take care of that ingredient and you have to make it available and you have to make it right. So we, we started working with farmers 20 years ago and we started understanding that there's a lot of challenges they face. And that right now our people talk about them here in the US uh, mostly superficially in reality, but there's a lot of challenges because the life of a farmer is very hard. They have a, a, a specific amount of land and then there's seasons where they have a lot of fruit, more than what the market needs, and then there's a season when, when they have zero fruit and they have to live by what they did before. So planning their future is very difficult. And the only way to sell their fruit is to go to the municipal uh, center and there's people the, that what they do is buy fruit from everyone around and then go to the markets to sell that fruit, those fruits. So the, the shortest end of the stick is always on the farmer side because they have the problem. They have either a lot of fruit or zero fruit. So the middleman and, and the market itself is very harsh on them. And, and then they cannot plan their future. It's very difficult to plan the future because their seasons, they have a lot of product. Their seasons, they have very little product. So what we do is, well, before that. And then there's another problem that they have. The second problem is that not all of the yield is ready to be sold in the open market. Today, everyone's talking about ugly produce and, and it's all the hype, ugly fruit. And 20 years ago, no one talked about that and no one cared. And it's a huge, huge amount of, of the yield that is not perfect for the market. So as, as you may have explained to your audience many times, the market decides, Lori, what an, a beautiful fruit is and what is not. So in, in, in terms of a mango, it has to be a specific size with a specific diameter, with a specific color, no, no dots, no lines, no nothing. And the blush mangoes always outsell the solid green mangoes, even though there's no, that's not an indicator of ripeness or sweetness, as you and I both know, but the end consumer, you know, doesn't necessarily know that. There's a learning curve with that fruit in particular about the the color of the skin on the mangoes. 